Right now, though, uh, it is time to bring in a guest that shows up on a regular basis here every week, and that is Thor and Kristen Dotter uh, from Main Street Magazine, Main Street Magazine on Robin Hood Radio. Good morning, Thor. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Very good, especially with uh, this nice little stretch of weather. You know, I was talking with Pat Pigano this morning, and uh, out south, down uh, the west coast, of course, they have a drought. Now in the uh, southern part of the country, uh, they've got a heat wave, oh, uh, flooding, uh, massive flooding uh, uh, in, in, in the upper northern plains. And uh, we're just sitting here with plain, boring weather with the partly cloudy skies. <laughs> you know, I think we should appreciate it here. <laughs> living where we live. Well, it does make you, you know, take stock and appreciate it, doesn't it? Well, it does. You know, we, in the wintertime, we have to put up with, you know, snowstorms. True, true. And uh, we have to put up with occasional an occasional brush from a hurricane uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and, and an occasional, an occasional uh, tornado. But other than that, no, I mean, uh, things are pretty good for us here. We're lucky. Well, we could even eliminate one of those and say that a lot of people actually like to snow. They do. But even people who like snow don't like like three and a half feet of snow. Mm, okay, okay. I'll, uh, take, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Now, for some reason, I'm having a tough time on bringing up your your PDF for the magazine today. Uh-oh. It, go, it goes along with everything else that's been going on with me today here. Let's try this again here. Click here. Not getting anything? It's not loading? It's not loading very fast. So it might well, be my it's, computer. It's a big PDF. It might be. No, it might be my computer because I did get an update from Windows. So, you know, anything is possible. So we're going to go to a different one. Right now. Let's see what we can bring up here. With any luck at all. I've had just a, an absolutely horrible morning. <laughs> well, that's too bad, and too bad we're doing it live. But what are you going to do, right? You, you you put up with what you put up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. We'll see what happens here on this computer now. There we go. Okay. There we find finally got it. Without this, without this, I'm lost. That's that's for sure. All right, so we're in the middle of June. We are. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just marvel at what goes on 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 a weekend uh, to weekend basis here in our. In our region, we are really are back to, we really are back to normal, uh, with all these things that are coming up in our area. It um, sure seems so. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's nice. That's that's all I can say about it. Um, I guess we'll go to um, the article about June Bride. It oh, was we a, talked about that one last time. I think we are up to actually the Renaissance. Ah, okay. Well, let's go to the Renaissance then. That Dominique wrote for us about uh, the Renaissance of Great Barrington. Oh, okay, yep, absolutely. Um, Great Barrington's always been, you know, you weren't around here. Uh, there, there was a massive fire in Great Barrington many years ago. Mm -hmm. It made national news because it destroyed a, a good portion of the business downtown district. What year was that? Oh gosh, uh, I you know I can't remember what year, but it was a while ago. Mm. Uh, and I I was in Kingston, New York, I think, when it happened. Uh, and then it made national news. Um, but Great Barrington always, you know, there's, we've always had two towns that have been the kind of center of things going on. One was Torrington, mm -hmm. and, and one was Great Barrington. Mm -hmm. but, and Great and Torrington is, is, is still Torrington. You've got so much arts there. And Great Barrington really has become, and Millerton has followed in Great Barrington's footsteps. Great Barrington is just a place where people can go a destination. They, they they don't have to have a reason to go there. There's just mm -hmm. so much to do in Great Barrington. And Millerton just seems to be a little, you know, half a half or maybe a third to the size of the Great Barrington. Yeah, but but it's, but it's but it's on the same track. That's the great thing right, about right. it. It's on the same track. Uh, and 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 I think one of the things that always helped Great Barrington was the Mahiwi Theater. And I think the thing that really kicked it off in Millerton, by the way, was the movie house when the movie house. Uh, opened up and started showing movies. It did. The Sadlands did a fantastic job with uh, turning that around and, and uh, bringing in really interesting films as well as mainstream films. 
and, 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 and so people had other reasons to come. And now you've got plenty of restaurants and stuff like that. But Great Barrington really is pretty amazing. Uh, and it's like when they did the sidewalk project a couple of years ago and they took down all the trees. Mm -hmm. uh, it really was devastating to people. It was devastating because it changed the way springtime looked in Great Barrington. It but, certainly did. But there's so there's so much going on there, and and they really are. If you're in Great Barrington, you're the center of the arts community because you got Williamstown way to the north, and you got Kent way to the south, and then east and west, and they're just about geographically right in the middle of everything that happens. They're kind of the gateway to the Berkshires, yeah. Yep, absolutely, absolutely, and and and. And there's just a lot to do, uh, and and the store owners uh, seem to be heritage store owners. If a, if if a store closes down, one opens up right away. Right. Well, the story that we have um, started in the '90s, or I guess early, or late '80s, early '90s, and Dominic interviewed uh, Richard Stanley, who owns, amongst other things, the movie theater there, and a number of other people about what was happening there, the transformation, the decisions that were made to bring it to where it was today because uh, you probably remember there were empty lots and, and uh, not much going on in certain areas. And I guess after the fire, uh, there was still some recuperation having to be done. And so they were kind of spearheaded that effort. And uh, so the argument is that they helped spark the renaissance of, or second or third you know, renaissance of Great Barrington to bring it to where it is today. It 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 really is a, a, a town that's just f filled with lots of uh, lots of uh, um, different stores. Uh, so kudos to Great Barrington, and they and also they got through the pandemic. <laughs> they did, and they have great activities too. Have you been to the car show in August that uh, usually takes place there? Actually, uh, a couple of years broadcast from the car show, uh, mm. and uh, we actually. Uh, when the schools go back in session in the summer, in the summer when the camps go in session, mm -hmm. now the past two years it hasn't been that way. We used to broadcast up, up in Great Barrington also because there was just literally hundreds of families, so thousands of people uh, came in, and uh, when they when they dropped their children off at the different camps around there, they mm -hmm. came to Great Barrington for shopping, for eating, and everything like that. So, um, so we 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 used to broadcast from Great Barrington uh, quite a bit, uh, and uh, that's it's, and that's why I look at Millerton and I, I look at the, what, what Millerton does, and they really have followed in the footsteps of Great Barrington. Uh, mm. There's just so you can compare the two. Millerton's much smaller, but you can still compare the two. Um, For sure. All right. What's well, the the unique flavor that each town has? Yeah, absolutely, uh, and uh, and great and Great Barrington is just a stone's throw away. Of course, you have to be careful going through Sheffield because you, if you speed, uh, they they there it's amazing how 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 many people get caught speeding in there. Happened. And in Egremont too. Well, yeah, yeah I, I know about Egremont. <laughs> It was funny. I think it was about 20 years ago. I was watching CNN headline news, and they were talking about the uh, num uh, num uh, number one town in the United States that gave the most uh, speeding ticket is tickets, and it was Egremont, Massachusetts. <laughs> well, I, well I, I remember very well once coming back through Egremont, and I was rushing to get back to the station. It was from a broadcast, and uh, I was coming down 41, and I was going 70 miles an hour, and a police cruiser was coming the other way. And he turned around, and by the time he got to my car, he was apoplectic. <laughs> <laughs> apoplectic. His face was so red, I thought he was going to actually kill me. But anyways, uh, but that's uh, the history of speeding in Great Barrington. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to um, uh, the next story, Making All the Difference. This is about the life and legacy of Richie, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, Vachuk. Um but Catherine Burke, um, who has worked uh, with the Bridge Authority, New York State Bridge Authority, and has written some books about bridges in New York, uh, wrote this for us about this gentleman who um, wo worked at the, I believe, the Bear Mountain Bridge for uh, most of his life, and spearheaded a museum there that um, collaborates with local schools and organizations. You can go see, you have to make an appointment, though, but... He collected memorabilia and helped put it together. Um, I believe it was his idea, actually. Um, it just isn't, you know, owed to the, the bridge that he loved so much. 
and unfortunately Richie has passed away uh, last year. Um, so this is kind of a dedication to him and, and his effort and his legacy. You know, when you talk about toll collectors and the bridges, I, I'm old enough to remember uh, toll booths where you threw tolls were actually, this is how old I am, a dime. <laughs> <laughs> but then they went up, originally toll collectors. And it used to be, it used to be so cool to you know to have toll collectors, mm -hmm. and now there's very very few toll collectors left. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's very few places that you can even throw tokens in. Everything's right, uh, via digital passes. Yeah, they've limited even the, some of the houses or the toll houses now. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's amazing. Well, anyway, um, yeah, the Bear Mountain Bridge. Well, that's that's kind of cool. It's a cool story about him. Uh, how we about were actually the, speaking of the toll bridges. We were actually for our podcast interviewing Tara Sullivan, who used to be the former head of the New York State Bridge Authority. And she was explaining to us how that whole system worked with the tolls and why they went up and sometimes down, and then now create going all digital. And it's a fascinating story about how that all works well, and how I, uh, yeah. it's the only independent organization in New York State, the New York State Bridge Authority. And you know what's great about to them. Uh, when you when you cross the George Washington Bridge, you don't, you never realize that you're paying fourteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Before you knew it, now you, it's painless. <laughs> well, actually, that's not part of the New York State Bridge Authority. It's that's only the Hudson Valley Bridges, the five bridges. Yeah, that's a, that's a different bridge authority. <laughs> but but uh, but you just don't know what you're paying. Thank gosh. <laughs> Yeah, All just right. take my easy pass and let's call it a day. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, nice story on Chris Kennan. Town Supervisor of Northeast. Yes. Yeah. He's a, he's a character. I love seeing him around town, and he's trying to do a lot of good things in town, um, in Millerton, that, or, of course, Northeast part of Miller, Millerton is part of that. Um, but Griffin wrote a great piece on him, a profile on him about a balancing change in tradition. Um, he talks about Chris's background and how he came into being town supervisor and how he has approached that and some of the projects, including the uh, town garage, Um and in kind of his view on these things. It's anybody uh, that gets into public office, uh, I just give credit to. A, they're doing their service to the community. And B, nowadays it's not easy. It's just yeah. not easy. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people up here that can afford lawyers. <laughs> and, right. and these poor people, whether you're a supervisor or a member of one of the boards, uh, you're faced many, many different times w with these lawyers that, and, and it's it's a thankless job. And mm -hmm. the great thing about about people like Chris and and Brent Colley here and everybody that serves on local boards and runs, is that the idea for our country, the Congress and the Senate, was that it was average Americans that ran for these positions. They they did their two years, four years, six years, and then they went back to their jobs. Right. And that's really what made this country so so different. Uh, and now it's a, it's still that way on the local level, thank gosh. Yes. But on the national level, it's it, it's a career opportunity for people, and it was never meant to be that way. It was meant to be the average American went. Mr. Smith goes to Washington and then does his does his civic duty and then comes back. So that's that's what's great. You get a we get a glimpse of that all the time here in our region, which we're very lucky. For sure. Okay, final final story. Mm -hmm. Getting into the swing of golf. So Mary uh, O'Neill has decided to go golfing with some of her friends, and uh, she went to the Canaan Country Club, which is under new ownership, and speaks a little bit about that, and also about the golf pro there and some of her tips. And uh, so uh, her name is Kay, and Mary raved about her and her instruction and the methodology that she uses. And Mary shared some of those tips with us here. So for those who are interested in trying out golf or maybe trying out a new golf course, uh, she tells us all about uh, Kay and the Canaan Country Club. Uh, and, and, you know, what's, what's, what's so interesting uh, about, about golf is that we have a lot of – you've got the Canaan Country Club. You've got uh, the, the golf club at, at Hotchkiss. You've uh, got Undermountain Golf. And, and it's really true. Everybody's friends on the golf course. It doesn't matter whether you're white, black, yellow, red, conservative, liberal. <laughs> it seems like when you get out on the golf course, uh, everybody just loves to, lo loves to play, and everything fades away and goes to the background. Right. 
and and by the way, uh, the new ownership uh, of the golf club, um, it was great about them. He was, he still has his other business, which is re- restoring antique cars. Yeah, wheels of time and plane yeah. planes. Yep, yeah. and, he certainly and, does. And you know what? I think when I when I spoke to him, he looked at when he took over the the country club, as once again restoring the country club. He okay. looked at he looked at it as totally different than what most people would think one will look at it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he's done a great job. It's you know, it's like anything else nowadays <laughs> with COVID. It's it's he took it over at a very rough time, right? Uh, and uh, and he's been successful. And uh, kudos to all the businesses. And I hope all the businesses are enjoying uh, the comeback this year because we certainly needed it. We certainly needed it. All right. Well, that is a look at the magazine. Are you you, you already set for uh, for next month already? Uh, we're getting there, of course. You know, per everything, and I I just blame COVID now. But uh, we we got a little behind, and it, we're we're staying behind. So you know, our, our deadlines have, have shifted a little bit. But uh, we're in the throes of it. Ashley has hard at work right now with uh, getting ads and and uh, working with our advertisers. There's still a window of folks want to advertise because July is our food and drink issue, which is one of our most or probably the most popular issue. Uh, usually our biggest issue too and um, so I'm I'm almost there with all the editorial and we close out next Monday uh, for all ads so uh, we're and I hope to send files maybe Tuesday Wednesday next week and we'll have them uh, well because the uh, 4th of July falls on a Monday so I'm not sure how uh, when our printer is going to get it to us if it's the you know on the first or if it'll be right around the fourth that we get it but it'll be out the first week there. All right. Well, uh, Thorin, thanks for putting up for the messy beginning today. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and we'll speak to you next week. All right. Sounds terrific. Enjoy Take the care. weather. Bye bye. Uh, Thorin Christian Dowder, Main Street Magazine here on Robin Hood Radio. Of course, you can find Main Street Magazine free pickup throughout the tri state region and also at their website, which is MainStreetMag.com.